for your journey in life, you need direction from the master. Get set, for the word you're about to hear is a roadmap out of every challenge into newness of life. Now, Apostle Jotan Bobai Adams. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you put your mind and say, Lord, my heart is open to be blessed this morning. Speak to me. Thank you, Lord. Speak to me in the name of Jesus. We honor and worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for granting us understanding to your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We can have our seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy to see you this morning. Congratulate neighbor for coming in the rain. Tell your neighbor you tried. Hallelujah. Praise God. Has been the weather. Like, like the other mic is sounding better. Uh, Has been the weather. Hallelujah. Good morning. Sweet and cool. Wow, that's beautiful. Hallelujah. Uh, welcome to Sunday service. And we have been on our month of spiritology. Hallelujah. How many of us have listened to all the messages we have listened to preached in this spiritology so far? How many of you have listened to the goodness of God, sovereignty of God, uh, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the changing power of the Holy Spirit, and, and the person of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. All the weekdays of this month have been awesome. A lot of things have been happening. But I believe God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, this week, is supposed, we are supposed to look at uh, understanding Satan and then understanding demonology. So our topic this morning for this first service is demystifying the devil. Demystifying the devil. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, why do we have to look at how to demystify Satan? Why? Because when we study God, we have to look at the opposing force of God. Like every doctor will not become a doctor only when you are taught about health. Hallelujah. You have to be taught about diseases also. Because nobody will tell you, okay, this is the way to live healthy, this is the way to live healthy. But you have to be taught also about diseases. You have to learn about the negative impact of the positive you are considering. You cannot also be a good driver if you don't know the power of accident. Or you, so anything you do in life, you need to know the opposite force. Hallelujah. So if we are studying God, understanding God, following after God, we need to know the reverse, not actually the reverse like that, but in quote, of following not God. Who are we resisting? Who do we choose not to follow? Hallelujah. What are his tactics towards getting us to follow him? How does he affect our life? Because everybody sitting here this morning have been affected by the devil. Either directly, indirectly, knowingly or unknowingly, the devil have affected our lives. Hallelujah. It would be a blessing to understand him. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Is our opening text, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. Let's read together. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Hallelujah. For we are not what? Ignorant of his devices. Hallelujah. That means Satan can take advantage of somebody that does not know. If you don't know, he can, you know, to take advantage means to be, if, if you are weighing a balance, to put one to be at an advantage or heavier than the other. The devil can take advantage of us if we don't know. So let Satan should get an advantage. So we can avoid being at a disadvantage with the devil if we know his devices. Hallelujah. And then if we know, that means we can know. We can know his device. Hallelujah. We can know what the devil is doing to get us to be affected by his power. 
Because if, say, for we are not, let the sinner should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That means Apostle Paul writing this scripture is aware of his devices. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 is our second opening text. I believe the Lord will help us this morning to understand the devices of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against what? Wiles of the devil. Wiles of the devil, tricks of the devil. Cunning's ways of the devil. So we can put on the whole armor that we can stand against it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me read Ephesians 6, 11 from another translation. So the word of God is coming this morning to help us put on the whole armor. Hallelujah. So that we'll be able to stand against the wiles, the tricks of the devil. Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand safe against all strategies and tricks of Satan. Hallelujah. Against all strategies and tricks of Satan. All of us are aware that when Jesus died, he resurrected, he took the key. He gave us the power over everything. What the devil has against us is tricks. Wisdom, corny ways, like what we call 419 or a trickster to get us to fail. So he said, we are not ignorant. And if we are informed and well taught, will be able to stand against it. God wants to be understood. That is why he wrote the Bible. Hallelujah. When you read the Bible, you will understand about God. You will understand about his person. But the devil do not want to be understood. Why? Because if you understand God, you will serve him, you will work with him. But the devil hates to be understood. Is it JJ? Wow. The, je- the devil hates to be understood. Hallelujah. He doesn't want people to understand him. He doesn't want people to understand his color, his ways, his tricks, how he operates. While God, on the other hand, always wants us to know him. So since the devil doesn't want to know, he keeps on hiding himself in things so that we don't see that he is the one walking behind those things. But when God is working, he wants us to see that it is God. So that is why it is more difficult to be able to understand the devil because he hides himself. That people don't clearly see that this is the devil. Hallelujah. He hides himself in people, he hides himself in things, he hides himself in a lot of factors that people cannot see that this is the devil working. So demystifying him means understanding the ways he operates. So that we can be able to see the devil in the real person that he is. Now there are some things I want you to know about the devil. That is one. The devil is more aware of God's presence than any human on the earth. The devil knows God's presence. Knows how to relate with God than any human on earth. The earth is less than 10,000 years according to the Bible. Even though science believe that the earth is over a million years old. Hallelujah. But no matter how old the, the earth is, we, got, we know from the Bible that the devil existed with God in heaven. Right before the creation of the earth. That's not true. Serving God, worshipping him, praising God, singing to God. Creating the atmosphere of God's presence by being in God's presence before man was created. So the devil knows about God's presence, knows how to keep God's presence, knows what to do to send God's presence away. So everything we are crying for, Lord, we need your presence. Holy Spirit, we need you. The devil knows those things more than any human being. So he knows how to manipulate us to go against the rule. Hallelujah. Secondly, is the devil is more intelligent than every human. Now, this is a fact that we need to know about him. He is more intelligent than any human that has lived, that will live, or that will ever live on the earth. The devil is more, more intelligent. Hallelujah. 
Very smart. If you ever think you are smart, the devil, I've heard somebody say that he will sin too much and the devil will be fighting him in hell. Hallelujah. You can never outsmart the devil. He is a spirit. Even demons are smarter than you. Hallelujah. He is a spirit, so he's very intelligent. He was there when your grandparent was alive, before the earth, but before Africa started, before anything. He's very, very smart. Thirdly, the devil still has his power. When Jesus died and resurrected, he didn't take power of the devil away from him. What God did was to empower us above the devil. Hallelujah. So, I know many people have said the devil does not have power. It's really because maybe we don't understand what <laughs> Maybe we have not faced him in real life. You cannot deny that witchcraft is not true. So, if witchcraft is true, where are they getting their power from? Hallelujah. Yeah, the devil still has his power, but his power does not work on the believers. He is still very very powerful and then one thing you must understand is that the devil is not foolish he's not foolish he's, you know many people have said the devil is a fool the devil is a bastard but one of the good things of the devil is that the young man sorry the young man he is very smart Ben he said that anybody that claims the devil is powerless it reveals his level of ignorance because the devil can do and undo a lot of things in life. Hallelujah. And then we can understand his system and be able to conquer him. Now, serving the devil has proven to be beneficial to people that do. Because he has a system of rewarding people in an earthly way for serving him. But then serving God comes with all forms of resistance because the devil still controls the systems of this world. Now, the devil is not in charge of this world, but he controls the systems of the world. Now, not everything happening in our life that is negative is caused by the devil. Say with me, not everything happening in my life is caused by the devil. Now, secondly, to say also, not everything resisting me, okay, is the devil. Hallelujah. Now, I don't need to say after me. Now, not everything resisting you in your life is the devil. There are principles that govern life. Example, when you want to go up, you will come down. What is bringing you down? The force of gravity, right? Now, is the force of gravity the devil? Now, think about it. Is, the, is gravity the devil? Now, it's a natural opposing force. That if you want to go up, there is a force that will pull you down. Now, that is not the devil. You cannot climb up and begin to fall down and say, and say no, the devil wants to kill you. No. There are forces in life that resist Normal upward movement because of gravity. So, not everything in our life is the devil. When you are failing, many times, it may not be the devil. It may be you resisting against the principles of life. Now, many things are governed by principles. And when you break those principles, the devil don't need to fight you. Those principles will fight you. Hallelujah. Just example like going up. If you are going up, the devil don't need to bring you down. There is a natural principle of gravity that will pull you down. So not everything happening in our life is the devil. Not everything resists. No, no, that is the extreme of Africa because everything is the devil. Once you eat the food that was not warmed and your stomach starts turning in the morning, Somebody will start resisting the devil and say, I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. When you drive a car without a brake and then you had an accident, you will say the devil wanted to kill him. When you are promiscuous and you have HIV, I say the devil. So there are many things that are not directly the devil. Why? Because there are principles that govern life. And when you go against those principles, life will resist you. 
Hallelujah. The systems of the world will resist you. So not everything negative happening in your life is the devil. I want you to sink deep to your life or in your mind. That not everything happening in your life that is negative is directly the devil. Now the devil can affect it indirectly. Sometimes when you don't know, you suffer a lot of negative things. But then the devil part in that is by guiding you not to know or stopping the information. Because when you know, you will not be a victim of that force. I don't know if you understand me. Now the devil may not be affecting you directly, but indirectly. He will stop you from getting the knowledge that will guarantee your freedom. He will stop you from getting the information that will guarantee your liberation. So when you fail in life, when things are not working, many times we must come out of that shell of blaming the devil. I think there is a video going around now about a young boy that stole and then his, his parent or his mother was beating him. I don't know if you saw it. And then he was blaming the devil. He said, stupid devil. The devil, no. See, not everything, you don't blame the devil on everything. There are many things because of our foolishness indecisiveness or ignorant we face a lot of negative backlashes of forces that god put on the earth to safeguard the world hallelujah so we must be able to grow in knowledge in god to understand that we must take responsibility for everything because it is easy to blame the devil when things don't work hallelujah it is easy to say it's because the devil is fighting me or to be easy to put the blame on Satan. But then, we must take responsibility for our life. If you fail in life, you cannot blame the devil. Hallelujah. If you don't succeed in life, you cannot blame the devil. We must be able to take responsibility to be able to understand him. Now, the devil... The, Satanic kingdom or the Satan himself is not omnipresent as we know. Is that correct? Omnipresence means he's not everywhere. I believe Satan, I don't know if he has ever been to his local job before. That means I'm talking about himself. Let's say he came to Kogisi on a visit. <laughs> Are you understanding me? I don't know if Satan has come to Kogi State himself. Hallelujah, I don't know. But we feel his impact. In Kogi State. I don't know if he has visited your house directly. You know your house. I'm talking about your family's house. I don't know if Satan himself has gone there. Let me say, has gone around all the houses in the wall and he has also visited your house. I don't think probably no. But he has system that in your house you feel his impact. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has system that no matter where you are, you feel his impact even if he is not there. Why? Because there are networks. There are satanic calculated networks that make sure the devil is represented everywhere. Just like the sun shining in one place, but we feel the impact in the whole earth. That is the way the devil is everywhere. I watched a film on, on, on the planet of Mars. And then when the scientists got there, they survived on oxygen, they started fighting and they started killing themselves. Then I asked myself the question, so the devil is not only on earth. Is he also in Mars and in Pluto? Hallelujah. <laughs> so if you escape the earth and go to Pluto thinking you are saved, the devil is there. Anywhere you feel his impact. Hallelujah. But he is not omnipresent. So what are the systems that the devil use to affect the whole world? The first system the devil use is the human nature. The human nature is a very, very powerful force that we must be able to understand. How do human beings operate? How does the human force operate? Hallelujah. Now, there are things that are natural to men, even if God does not involve, because we have our own will, we have our own force. That is the natural greed in human beings. Just like a small child growing, 
Hallelujah. A small child growing and then you put them together before the devil. There is still natural tendencies in humans. So the devil can take advantage of our grief, of our greed, of our insatiable discontentment in human nature to be able to operate in ways that are very, very deadly. So the first system where we feel the devil's presence is he uses the human nature which was naturally corrupted after the fall of Adam. Hallelujah. Immediately after Adam fell, who was the first perfect human being, nature was corrupted. And the devil take advantage of that to cause great manipulation. To cause the killing, the first killing of Cain and Abel, to cause all the havoc, to cause all the assassinations, anything negative, the first system he used is the human nature. Hallelujah. Secondly, is he uses demons. The devil used demonic forces. Now, there has been a lot of debate, I believe, in second service to look at that, whether demons are also from heaven. Hallelujah. But it is clear from scriptures that, of course, demons means this embodied spirit. That means spirit without bodies. But the angel that fell from heaven had spirit. Had bodies. The Bible, the Bible says we have body terrestrial and body celestial. Hallelujah. So spirit angels that fell from heaven had their bodies active. But demons are this embodied spirit. And when you read the book of Genesis, right from verse 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, when you read about the fall of men, you heard in the Bible that sons of God, I know you have heard that before, right? Sons of God fell and then they saw beautiful ladies and they took them and they had sex with them and then they gave birth to children. And then we have, you read in the Bible, you heard about Anakims. And then you heard about giant like Goliath. You heard about people having six foot, six hands. You heard about people that were big, giant. So, and then people generally believe those were the descendants of half humans, half spirit. Are you following my story? No, a descendant of half human, half spirit. And then after the flood of Noah, after the flood of Noah, the Lord destroyed. As a matter of fact, theologically, many people believed that Noah was the only pure human. That is theology. Hallelujah. That was alive before that period. So God has to save him. But anyway, even if he was not a pure human, after the first death, there were human spirit, and then there were half human, half God spirit. Are we together? So the half human, half human, half God spirit are believed to be disembodied spirit. And they are what theology believes to be demons. Because the Bible says that the angels that fell with Lucifer, half of them, some of them are in judgment, some of them are not permitted to operate. Some of them are worshipped as idols, and some of them are worshipped as deities. So they are not demons. Hallelujah. So demons are this embodied spirit. That is one of the systems that the devil used to operate. Like I shared with us last week that demons also operate in levels of understanding and levels of wickedness. When a demon is cast out from a man, he goes out to dry places looking where he may find rest. And if he doesn't find rest, he looks for other seven more wicked demons. You remember last Sunday? So that means demons have level of wickedness. One can be more wicked than the other. And then we know that 12,000, 16,000 or 12,000 demons can be in one person. So that is another system that the devil used to operate. He used demons. We have the demons for loss, demons for everything. What they do is they cause the feeling for that. Or they cause the affinity for that negative influence. Let's say the demons of, of, of murder is operating in your life. They cause you to want to kill. Hallelujah. They cause you to want to take a human life. They cause you to want to shed blood. Why? Because they are in operation in you. So the first system the devil used to operate is the human nature. Secondly is demons. Thirdly is the principles Governing life. The principles governing life. 
I remember teaching us in a month of prophecy about principles and prophecy. I taught us like 12 to 16 principles that govern life. That when you do them, the results are predictable. Do you remember? One of the principles was what? Seed time and harvest. Do you remember? And that principle says, so long as every minute, seed time and harvest will not cease. When you sow something, you will reap it. Another principle is the law of attraction. That means what you want, what you desire, what you call for, what you go for, is what you get. Hallelujah. Another principle that governs life is systems of life grows in a process. Now when you go against these principles, you face the negative consequence of that principle. When you follow the principles, you get the positive result of that principle. So the devil used us to go against principles and then we see the backlash of those principles on their own. So the devil don't need to work necessarily. When we do or we go against the principles, we will see the negative result of those principles. And then it's obvious we credit the negativity of the results we are seeing to the devil. So if you sow negative seed early in life, you reap a backload of negativity. And then we credit that to the devil. I don't know if you understand my preaching this morning. So going against principles produce negative results. Going for principles produce positive results. So we must be able to understand that the system the devil uses is to cause us to go against what should work so that things start not to work. Example, it is a principle that when you get educated, when you study, when you work hard, you live a good life. You live a life that is financially blessed. You live a life that is financially or mentally stable. You live a spiritually sound. And then when you are not knowledgeable or when you are ignorant, you live a life that is at the mercy of what things offer you out of knowledge. When you don't work hard, you live at the mercy of poverty and lack. Hallelujah. So going against principles produce negative results. And negative results produce the effect that we create to the devil. So the first system the devil uses is our human nature. Secondly is what? Secondly is what? Demons and his system, yes. Thirdly, I said is what? All right. And then fourthly, are what we call demonic or satanic, satanic networks. Satanic networks. Now, when you read the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and then 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3 down to verse 6. The Bible spoke um, about some level of satanic oppression. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 6. Oh, screen is up. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. But though we walk in the flesh, we walk not after the flesh. Is that what is up? Okay. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Hallelujah. Now that is the last system the devil used. Number two is, uh, and then casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Now let's look at the list from verse 4. From verse 4 again. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds, fight now. Imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So I've given you the number one. I said human, human nature. Number two, demons. Number three was what? Principles. And then number four is what? Satanic system. Now, number four, now, now principle looks like every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God are the ones I've given you. But then we have strongholds. You can add strongholds to the list and then imaginations, which are the last two I'm going to explain. So, I'm bringing into captivity every thought. Do you understand my explanation? I said number one was human nature. All these are high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And then the next number is strongholds. And then the last is imaginations. Then bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yes, verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Now, all of us are aware of what the Bible calls territorial forces. Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 also. Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 also, 10 to 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. We are getting strong in the Lord in the name of Jesus. We are being armed to be strong in the Lord in the name of Jesus. We are being equipped not to be weak. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say with me. I battle all the forces. I am not weak in the name of Jesus. I am empowered with knowledge. I am equipped with information. In the name of Jesus Christ. But we say, finally, my brethren, because all of us are brethren, be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. We are not easily defeated. We are not easily overtaken by darkness we are strong we are strong hallelujah i feel like saying this 30 times to myself i am strong in the lord no 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 i don't mean to say hallelujah so say, i feel like saying it hallelujah i feel like saying myself i'm strong in the lord not easily moved not easily distracted hallelujah not easily giving up but strong in the lord hallelujah not easily see there's one thing I believe in my life, and it's one scripture that Esther said, is if I perish, I perish. I don't know if you've ever seen that scripture before. When she was about to meet the husband, what's the name of the king? The king, Ahasuerus. And then she said, if I perish, like she made up her mind, if I am going to die, I will die. So I've made up my mind in certain things, even as I'm pursuing God, as I'm fasting, as I'm waiting with God. Sometimes I say, if it is dead, me and the devil will just die. Because I hate to be weak. I want to be strong in the Lord. When I face a challenge, I always look at the part of my body that is strong. And I heard God's servant, Dr. Paul, and he said this week, he said that when you face a challenge, that challenge is pulling something out of you. It's pulling faith. It's pulling strength. If you have ever seen a child that lost their parent as children, let's say when they were four or three years old, and then they, they, they say three children or two children say that all of us must become doctors, all of us must become educated. They grow up strong, facing all manner of resistance. When you see a child having nobody to help, sometimes they are the strongest people. They go through the hardest of time, but they are not weak. Hallelujah. That is the way I've made my mind spiritually not to be weak. So finally, my brethren, myself and you, we are becoming strong in the Lord. You are not giving up in challenges. You are not being discouraged in challenges. Hallelujah. When you face a challenge, I want you to be strong in the Lord. Say with me, I am becoming strong. In the Lord. Hallelujah. When you face delay in marriage, don't become weak. Be strong. 
when you face challenges with finances, don't become weak. Be strong. When you face challenge in health, don't become weak. Let those things make you stronger. You know, like, like I said, like the back of a tortoise, you are not moved. When you are criticized, when you are mocked, when you, nothing is working, don't become weak. Be stronger. Let those things. I, I, I don't know if I was a science student. You remember soap experiment? Do you remember soap experiment? When you, physics? Was it in, is it chemistry? Soap experiment in chemistry. There is an experiment you do when we are making soap, when you are extracting soap from fat. There is something you do that makes the strong. That's a chemical, but because many of us, <laughs> they are looking at me. But that is what that is the thing that came to my mind. There's a chemical you apply to the soap and then it starts becoming hard. 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 You remember, right? It will become, before it will be soft, it's fat, extracting it from fat. You see the vegetable fat here? They have also, but then when you apply it, suddenly it becomes hard. May life make you strong and not weak. Challenges should not make you easily give up, crying, crying, crying up and down. Hallelujah. But be strong in the Lord. So finally, my brethren, the same with demonic forces. Let demonic forces make you strong in the Lord. Push you to God. And then you are not weak. And I believe that I just, when I said this, when I just said this scripture, I just felt the anointing of God coming on me, talking to us to encourage us to be strong. Hallelujah. I want us to be strong. Don't easily be distracted. It takes a strong heart to do big things. It takes a strong heart. Hallelujah. Where everything has closed down. You know, if you are evil, you know, evil people have a mindset in business. No matter how many times the business go up, you can start again. So no matter how disappointed, it's when you meet an evil man and just close the shop, somebody just say, don't worry, you can start again. They are strong. Hallelujah. They are strong. You don't achieve life by being weak. You don't overcome the devil with weakness. You have to be strong. You have to be strong to make it in life. You know, yes, on Sunday, last Sunday, I was talking with one of us telling me about his story. And then when I went home, I was listening to his face, I said, like, this individual is really strong. I could not even believe he went through things like this. But things make you strong. Hallelujah. Make you strong. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, the whole of it, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles against the tricks against the tactics against the wisdom how many of us have ever tricked a child before to eat what he was in his hand have you ever tricked a child before let's be sincere you tricked a child and then you collected what was in his hand and then you went with it as if have you done it before all of us are guilty we have done it to a child before somehow so we have tricked him somehow maybe the guy was eating something that was maybe we felt it was above him or you gave a child it was only one thousand i gave him two five an error and then you collected the 1,000 Naira. Yeah, children would naturally prefer that you gave me two money. Or you was having two money, 10, 10 Naira, and then you are taking it away to give him 500 Naira. I said, no, I want you to give you, are taking two money from me. That is a trick. Hallelujah. There are tricks you use to get things from people. It's cunning ways, devices. So, so when we put on the whole of the armor, we can stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not, you know, there are many tricks that men use, and there are many tricks that women use also. And then when you understand those tricks, and I've been teaching us many of those tricks here in church, those tricks will arm you, hallelujah, not to be easily taken. Like some of the tricks that ladies use is they know that the secondary need of a man is sex. Not actually the secondary, it's battling with the number one. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. The number one need of a man is respect. That's why people say the love language of a man is respect. Men have actually phoned it. Respect, sex, support. What's the fourth one? Respect, sex, support, and affirmation. Four basic needs. So now, ladies know that most of, the, apart from respect, the most need of men is sex. 
I heard from Bishop Dark Edward Mill says he had two of his pastors have met him, their wife. As they were just about to have sex with them, the woman gave a check by the bed. As a sign. Before we continue, yes. The other one, yes. That is the strength of manipulation because they know that men like it. So they use that to manipulate men. That is tricks. Hallelujah. Freaks. And the women, the men also knows that women like money. Do keep 100,000 naira. Do you do press up? Do you do press up? Do you do press up? If you keep 100,000 naira and say, do press up and have it, she will do it. <laughs> like, so, the grace will come. <laughs> <laughs> for pressure, it's like that. Like women are motivated. Why? Because they are security inclined, and money provides security. Hallelujah. So they like money. So men take advantage of their want for money to trick them to get what they want. And women use what men want to trick them to get what they want. Hallelujah. So there are tricks people use and there are codes that people use. And the Bible says we are not ignorant. So we should be able to understand the wiles, the forces of darkness. So but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. Our enemy is not, are not humans. Now this revelation is difficult to understand naturally. It's very, very difficult. It took me years even till today. I find it difficult to be able to relate how our battle is not against flesh and blood. Because sometimes I think about it, there are people that consciously sell themselves to do evil. Like the Bible said, this king sold himself to do evil. There are people that are intentionally wicked. Intentionally. There are people that borrow money and don't return intentionally. There are people that eat your food again and again. There are people that hurt you intentionally, but I will say, but our battle are not against them. Come on, are we together? We wrestle not against blood and blood, flesh and blood, but tell your neighbor we wrestle. But not against flesh and blood. But for wrestling, we must wrestle. All of us must fight. Whether you like to fight or not, whether you like to wrestle or not, all of us must fight it. True life. So, but our battle is not against flesh and blood. I, I agree, I understand there are many things in this life that are spiritual. Very spiritual. Example, marriage. Example, to find somebody to marry. Example, to have a baby. Example, to have a business growing. There are many things in life that are highly spiritual. Hallelujah. And then until you attract them or fight them spiritually, it doesn't work. So we wrestle not against flesh. That is why you must pray. You must switch from natural to spiritual. Understand that it is difficult to move from the natural to the spiritual. But we must train ourselves that if something is not working, there is a spirit making it not to work. Come on, I don't know if you're understanding me. I feel like crying as I'm saying this. If something is not working, there is what? A spirit behind it. Anything in your life that is not working, apart from the fact that it's a natural factor, there is a spirit behind it not working. So we must be able to look away from the natural and command the spirit. But against principalities, Against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. <laughs> Hallelujah. In high places. Let's go through the list again. But against what? Principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places hallelujah now i have to depend on authorities to be able to interpret this topic kenneth e Aiken said the least is in descending order descending means the highest is first right yes the least is in descending order principalities are the strongest then powers 
the rulers of darkness and then spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. Now, we all know and are aware of the hierarchy and the order of the spiritual system. Do you remember when Daniel prayed and started praying for 21 days and then angel, who was the angel that was sent? Who was the angel that was sent? Gabriel, right? Hallelujah. And then in the Bible, we know there were two powerful angels, Gabriel and Michael. And then Gabriel was sent. And then a principality or another force stopped him. Now you think about it. I think it's unfair for God to send an angel. And then the demonic force stopped the angel. It's not unfair. Like, God sent not just a normal angel, Gabriel. Remember, we look at the names in angels before. Gabriel, Michael, somebody say Samuel. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then, I hear that after the service, there are people that tell me that there was Uriel. Uriel or Uriel. I don't know where they got that one from because it's not in the Bible. Hallelujah. But it's in the Bible. Huh? I've never heard about Angel Ruel before. Okay, I've not heard it. Oh, you are saved then. Hallelujah. You have heard it before, yes. I've heard about it. And I, I, well, now, many, that is what we call the book of Enoch. I hear we have the book of Enoch. Even the, huh? Even the Bible mentions the, the, the Bible says the book of Enoch. You know, there are many books in the Bible. The Bible says it is written in the book of this. When you read your Bible, the Bible says it is written in the book of Joshua. It is written in the book of this. You see, you see that in the Bible, right? That is clearly telling you there are other scriptures that are not in the Bible. There are many people that, when you remember Paul saying that, many have written, but this is the one we are written. But then we have what we call the canon of scriptures. Canon of scriptures means after all the Bibles, people have written their own versions. A set of people sat down and brought certain of the Bibles that were written, or certain books or letters that were written by certain people, and then they matched them and discovered the one that was the same, and the one was, what I mean by the same was, it was concurrent with Genesis down to other one. It was matching with the rest. Come on, out together. So it's like the extra five books of, that is in the Roman Catholic book, that good news, but we see there are five books, Judas, Tobit, and then what? Five books like that. So all of them were written for long, but then generally, the universal church did not agree that this should be part of the Bible. So anything outside the 66 books, we consider it not safe. Hallelujah. So any information, most of this information are gotten from those books. Jael, all of them, they are getting gotten from this book. But since it is not part of the 66 books, I believe what we have in the 66 books are safe for us and it's good we, save, we stay within there. So now, Gabriel was sent and then a principality stopped him. Now the question was, why didn't Gabriel overpower him? Why? Because, you know, things are in hierarchy. Hallelujah. If we are in the same level, you cannot overpower me. God had to send another angel to come and help Gabriel to go. Praise God. Why? Because there are principalities over territories. There are forces over territories. You don't need somebody to, know, to tell you that there are principalities. Why? Even in Africa, that Africa is a dark nation. What is happening in Nigeria is not the same as what is happening in Ghana. It's not the same as what is happening in Togo. It's not the same as what is happening in Benin. All of us are in darkness <laughs> in Africa. But the negativity of the forces are not the same. Why? Because they are governed by different forces. Come on, do we understand that? So there are principalities over territory. And then just like Kogi said, you must be aware, there are forces and then against powers. There are powers over territories. There are powers that make things to happen. There are rulers of darkness of this world. And then spiritual wickedness in the high places. Now these are all the systems that the devil used. These are his network. Such that like I said earlier on, he doesn't need to visit your house. But by his these systems, he is represented everywhere. And when the principality is effective in a territory, the devil is represented and then will feel his impact. When rulers are effective, when powers are effective, 
And when spiritual wickedness is on the increase, the devil is felt. 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Hallelujah. So we are coming from human nature, demons, laws and principles, demonic network. Hallelujah. So these are the network the, youth, the devil used to represent himself and spread his tentacles like an octopus. And he's felt everywhere. So we must wrestle against spiritual wickedness. Wrestle against territorial powers to be able to break loose. Wrestle against spiritual forces of darkness to be able to break through. And then wrestle against principalities. So imagine if Shekinah encounter center is going to break through. What we have to contend with. Imagine if your life as a believer has to break through. We must be able to break all satanic forces to be able to survive. So these are the network he used. And then the last, or second to the last, like I shared with us, is the strongholds. Strongholds are strong mindset or strong understandings that the devil creates in a particular set of people. And when you want to get those set of people out of his grip, you have to change the stronghold. Popularly, the stronghold of Africa is the stronghold of religion and mysticism. In Africa, everything is credited to a spiritual force and credited to a mysterious force in oppression that can be used to explain everything. And then when you go to the modern world, they believe everything can be explained by science. So when you bring religion, they say religion is an opium of the masses. Hallelujah. It doesn't work. It doesn't apply. When you go to Russia, Putin said that religion does not work. Religion is for lazy people. Somebody was telling somebody that people that go for church conferences are people that don't have anything to do. Hallelujah. So there are strongholds that guard territories. And then to be able to overcome that satanic system, you have to renew your mind. You see, one of the greatest things to do for Africans is to remove the mindset that the devil is behind everything negative happening in your life. You must remove it. The devil, is, the devil may be indirectly affecting the system, but when you understand the way life works and the way things are done, you will be able to say that some things Oh, a lot of the things happening in my life are my responsibility. Hallelujah. And when I take responsibility according to scriptures, the devil is not much. And then the last one is imaginations. Imaginations. Imaginations against what is happening in our life. So how do we overcome the devil? After understanding his system of operations, how do we overcome him? The first is knowledge. Knowledge helps us to survive his tricks, his wiles, and his tactics. Knowledge, firstly, primarily of the word of God. Knowledge helps us to survive the tactics of the devil. When you know, you cannot be controlled. When you know, you know what to do. When you understand the forces are in alignment. Knowledge is key to surviving. Hallelujah. Knowledge is key to understanding and overcoming what the devil can do and what he cannot do. Remember in opening I said that the devil does not want to be understood. But that God wants to be understood. So God revealed himself but the devil hide himself. The more you understand about the devil, the more weak and disembodied he becomes. The more you understand the way he operates, the more you are strengthened and the weaker he becomes. The more you understand who you are and what you are in God, the weaker the devil becomes in your life. The more you understand what God can do 
in you and to you, the weaker the devil becomes. And the more you understand about his tricks, the more you understand about his manipulations. Hallelujah. I believe maybe one of that will share with us maybe 13 ways the devil used to affect a system. There are ways the devil used to affect a system. When you understand it, you are more at peace. Hallelujah. Sometimes the devil can cause everything to go against you. Sometimes the devil can produce backbiting in the church. The devil can produce gossiping. The devil can produce stinginess. The devil can produce disloyalty, unfaithfulness, backbiting, backtalking. All these are tricks to make things not to work. If the devil wants your family not to work, or man, your marriage or relationship not to work, he doesn't have to appear in a room in black and black. Hallelujah. All he needs to do is a trick in the mindset of somebody. All he needs to do and then that is it. Hallelujah. But the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Just listen, I was hearing of a young lady. After introduction, one introduction, two introduction, suddenly the devil stroke. Like I said, I just want to marry a young lady. Why? Her tribe. I don't like her tribe. Now think about it. How can you take somebody for seven years? They have gone for introduction. Second, first introduction, second introduction. People came and then said, I don't like her tribe. Now think about that. I say, lady, it's not tears. Tears will not work. That is a devil somewhere tricking your life. Hallelujah. But you'll never be a victim of such in the name of Jesus. You'll never be a victim of setting up satanic wickedness and human, human, inhuman, <laughs> inhuman conscience. So knowledge, and may you be, see, you have to intentionally go for knowledge because you want to know somebody that doesn't want to be known. That is to tell you that we have little or no information about him outside. He hides many things about him. He hides that he has been defeated. He hides how to understand the system of the, of the darkness. He hides the forces of occult world. He hides how to bring things down. He doesn't want to be known. Hallelujah. Yes, so he hides his information. But by all means, try to know. And then when you want to know, stay within the limit of scriptures. Anything the Bible did not reveal, say you are not interested. Any book that is outside the Bible. But try to know about the devil. Understand his tricks. Understand the way he works. Understand the way he attacks. Understand the way he destroys destinies. Secondly, is by spiritual empowerment. By spiritual empowerment. By that I'm talking about gaining spiritual stamina. Gaining spiritual power. Gaining spiritual strength. Gaining spiritual empowerment will help. So once you know Knowledge is not enough. We need to be empowered. After Jesus taught the apostles and the disciples for three and a half years, they now knew. They understand the devil. Because Jesus told them in Luke 10, he said that, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Hallelujah. On one I will tell us the, like seven names of the devil because you understand him by his seven names. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. So they know the devil has been defeated. But he said, tarry, Luke 24, 49, I believe. He said, tarry until you are endued. So now the devil has been defeated, you know. But that is not enough. You have to wait and tarry until you are endued. Hallelujah. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be what? Come on, until ye be what? Say one more time, until we are what? Endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. That is the reason why we fast. That is the reason why we pray extensively so that you are being endued, you are being empowered. 
to be able to resist all satanic and demonic systems. Hallelujah. So after we know, we go for empowerment. Because many people know the devil is real. They know he's against them, but they are weak towards him. They don't have the power to resist him. Have you ever tried to buy something that is very good and you know that you need this thing, but you don't have the money to buy it? Has it ever happened to you before? You are hungry, you know you need food, but you don't have the power. You know you need it. I'm never supposed to know that you need fruit. Especially apple. I'm never supposed to aware. But have you ever stand before an apple man and you're powerless? Yeah, like financially powerless. Has he ever done it before? All of us, yes. You know you need apple. <laughs> but you lack the power to have it. So knowledge is not enough. We need to be empowered spiritually. So that when we say go, the devil goes. When we resist him, he will be able to flee. Because the Bible says resist the devil. And then finally submission to God. James chapter 4. From verse 6 to 7. Once you know, once you are empowered, and then you submit yourself. That he given more grace, wherefore he said, Come on, back, back to five. Now let's see verse five. Back to verse five. Do you think that the scripture said in vain that the spirit that dwelleth in us lost it to envy? Verse six. But he given more grace, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Hallelujah. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. So when you submit yourself to God, then you will what? Resist the devil and he will what? Flee from us. So once we know we are empowered and then we submit ourselves to God, we resist the devil, he will flee. Once we know, once we are empowered with the Holy Spirit, with the power of God, and we submit ourselves to God. When you resist the devil, he will flee in our life. Hallelujah. He will definitely flee. So what are the systems the devil used to attack us? The human nature, right? So when you understand the human nature well, you'll be able to understand the tricks the devil used to get to us. Number two, I said was what? He used the network of demonic forces. And they are not himself. Number three, he used principles against us. Going against principles, we have negative results. Hallelujah. And when you have negative results, it creates a system of negativity that is accredited to the devil. The next one I said was what? Demonic network, right? Satanic networks. And then we mention all those forces. Babalao is one of the networks. Which is of all of them are network spiritual forces, and then the other one I said was strongholds, hallelujah, and then imaginations. So, like the devil said, I will ascend and be like the God of the most high God. Then the way to overcome his network is by knowledge. Go for knowledge and know. Hallelujah. The preaching of the word of God, like this, is bringing you knowledge. Hallelujah. It's bringing knowledge to us. We are knowing the devil. We are understanding his tricks. You will not be a victim of haste. Hallelujah. Like the Bible says, he that believeth will never make haste. You take your time to achieve what you must achieve. Hallelujah. So we are going for knowledge. Getting to know. Getting to understand. Number two I said was what? Spiritual go for empowerment. Even though the devil is not at our level of operation in power, when we go for knowledge, we can put him where he belongs and put those forces where they belong. And then finally is what? Submit yourselves to God. Now, I feel we need to pray, not that I feel, I'm led for us to pray against demonic systems working against our lives. Hallelujah. Anywhere the devil is working our life for God to unravel it. Let's be on our feet and pray and say, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, Grant me knowledge against the systems of darkness. What is against my life 
in the name of Jesus. Can you open your mouth and pray the next one minute and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, grant me knowledge, grant me power. Shabalanda Baragadesh. Grant me knowledge. Grant me knowledge. Open my eyes. Say with me, Lord Jesus, lead me to books. Lead me to messages. Lead me to knowledge that I'll be able to know and understand in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to lead you to information. Where there is knowledge, where there is power banks, where there are informations. In the name of Jesus. Secondly, say, Lord Jesus, empower me with your power against demonic forces. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. And say, Lord, empower me with grace. Empower me with forces. Empower me with wisdom against satanic forces. I resist spiritual empowerment. I resist spiritual empowerment. I resist spiritual empowerment. Baranamalanda Gabra Gadaya. I resist spiritual empowerment. Lateka Baraga Dabra Gadea. Zele de Berega de Brega de Lega de Brega de Zila Baragada. Baranamanda Cabraga da Shakala Bagadea. Lega de Bega de Rega de Brega de Lega de Brega Legadea. Shagalaga da Braga da Laga da Braga Lagada. Finally, say, Lord Jesus, I submit myself to you in the name of Jesus. Submit yourself unto God. Submit yourself unto God. Submit yourself. Unto God, submit. I surrender. I surrender. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The Lord has empowered me to pray for us this morning against Satanic Network. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hands? You will see a change. Father, in the name of Jesus, you brought these people this morning to be able to be demystified from every Satanic force and work against their life. I have taught them some level of knowledge. Now I minister to them from the anointing and from the grace that you have put upon me and you have empowered me to minister to them. As the shepherd, I declare over them any satanic network working against your life, I resist you. I speak to those networks in the name of Jesus that their grip and their oppression over your life is broken. In the name of Jesus. Anything resisting your advancement. Everything that the devil is using to cover your life and cover your destiny. I break those networks. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord open your eyes to be able to see where the devil is operating. And causing your life not to work. Anything working in not working is a product of something. A spirit behind it. I command every spirit against your life moving forward to be removed. I minister from the power of God and I declare your liberation in the name of Jesus. May your mind be free. May your life be free in the name of Jesus. And I declare your freedom permanently in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you to be graced to be able to submit yourself to God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have our seat. The compass you need has just been delivered into your hands. You can get all the anointed messages on our telegram channel at Shekinah Encounter Center Sermons. For more inquiries, you can also call 80 65 6262 Seven six or zero eight zero two six one one two one one four. Remain rapturable, 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 rapturable.